Many thanks for rejoining us again on the program. Good morning, Abuja. And yes, we have another guest with us in the studio to talk on a very important topic that concerns you and I, talking about economic empowerment. And we have the CEO of Full Life Empowerment Program and also a life coach to talk to us more on economic empowerment. Help us welcome to Mrs. Kumala. Yes, <laughs> you're, you're welcome, welcome on the program. To the program. Thank you so much. You're welcome on the show. Okay, so when we say economic empowerment, empowerment generally, let's take it from there. What's it all about? Um, okay, so when we talk about empowerment, I think it's just about building capacity. Okay, you know, and um, empowerment, it's like um, it's like it, it's like a train. You know, it doesn't just end with one person. When you say someone is empowered, when you talk about empowerment, it has to you have to see the result of what you've done. You know, translating into uh, maybe. A next person or the next person in line or the next generation. Yeah. So empowerment is just building capacity that can be, you know, that can lead to influence. Okay. What are these forms of capacity building that you consider empowering enough to be able to translate impact to the next person? Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So um, usually, I know in Nigeria's um, sphere, when we talk about empowerment, yes. usually we would say uh, maybe giving someone a tool or, you know, training and all of that, but I believe empowerment is actually bigger than that. Okay. You know, there's also like even a spiritual empowerment, mm. <laughs> there's mental empowerment, you mm. know, yes, because when, if you say it's building capacity, then it's a holistic thing, also in your mind, how are you building yourself, how are you reading, you know, how are you, um, le- are you learning new things, are you, you know, adding value to yourself and all of that, yes, so empowerment is a holistic thing, it's not just in the training in one regard. Okay, when you say empowerment is a holistic thing, now tell us the role uh, which education plays in this uh, empowerment. Hmm. I think education is even like, I would personally say, from a personal view, education is like, the, should I say the foundation? Okay. Actually, yeah, yeah because um, most of the issues we even have, like, when we, when we talk about, okay, for people in the development space, you know, most of the issues they say hinders empowerment and life is actually education, okay. you know, because you can't just, um, you can't give someone a tool that they don't even know how to do this so, tool, you know, and all of that. Yeah, so education is a key role, is a, is a key factor in empowerment because it, it teaches you and it trains you on how to even use that, um, um, say skill or resource or whatever it is that you want to use, you know, moving forward. Yeah, so education is, you first need to know, know how. You know, the how is always important, the why, and then you can now translate it. Then we say influence, yeah. So even when you're influencing, you understand why you're influencing, who you're influencing, the right people, and all of that. Okay. Um, gender equality here. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Gender equality. Yeah. It will look like the, the ladies are getting more empowered than, than the guys. 100% I agree with you. On uh-huh. I, I knew um, it. But, but, no, 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 wait, wait. I agree with you, but there's still something to um, yeah, so as as a, as, a, as a leader of an of an NGO, yeah. Personally, I also see that even in what we do, you know, of course, most of all these support programs, most of all these um, empowerment programs and the likes are usually targeted towards women. We we hear women and girls, men and girls. But I think if you really look at it, it's not so much that they want to neglect the guys. It's probably from where we've been coming from. However, what we advocate for now is a balance. You know, two wrongs don't make a right. Exactly. If we were probably saying that okay, before men were this and that, and then the women were neglected, just saying go to the kitchen, do all of that. Now if we are trying to like make a change and we are trying to bring about improvements, we should also carry the boys and the men along. Just a few a few days back, yeah, last week, okay. we actually met one of our partner organizations and we're talking about because of course okay, that forget good women of course. <laughs> well you know in the in the program we're now thinking of empowering the household. So bringing the men um to the trainings I want to do for the women. So it's like there's a balance. You know, so I, I agree with what you said about that women's service actually real because if you want to do the statistics, just a few organizations are targeted at like focused for boys and men. But I think yes. it's coming up. You, you know, we are women here, yeah, so let's agree with me with him because there yes. is this saying that the when you yeah. when you empower a woman, it, it will in turn go back to the society and they will they, they will in turn feed the whole nation now. Yeah. This is uh, leading me to my next uh, questions. How important is needs assessment in social development? Wow. Mm. Very important. Okay. Um, so just last week, yeah, where I met your colleague, that was okay. also the one, of course, you know, it was actually at a, in, in quote, like needs assessment activity, we actually, you know, we met and in DECO. And okay, so that was actually a problem tree. And yeah, that was a problem tree meeting that I went to do in the um, DECO community to understand, like you said, need assessment, to go to the community, understand what their issues are, assess the issues and all of that. Yeah, I think it helps in, oh, I'm not talking too fast. <laughs> I think it helps in, you know, um, 
you designing relevant solution. You know, there's one thing to have a solution. <laughs> The other thing that the solution is actually relevant and sustainable. So, needs assessment is very important. Instead of jumping the gun and just saying, okay, this is what the people need, well, you know, um, understanding what really first is going on, you know, do, a, do, do a community assessment, do a need assessment, get your data, get your statistics, compare, um, work together with people, you know, collaborate on designing a relevant solution and then coming forward. Well, when we talk about needs assessment, our uh, human capital development also comes to mind. So let's just quickly pinch your thoughts on human capital development. Which ones should we be doing? Which ones should we be doing? Yes, in what areas should we be doing this human capital development? What development could translate to human capital? You know, capital is there, money. <laughs> so let's talk about that. Ah, well, capital is not only money. Okay. <laughs> you know, capital actually, like it was you already said human capital, there's yeah. also social capital, there is uh, um, financial capital, of course. Right. Money. <laughs> they are different. Oh, it does, they're just commenting on this money. <laughs> yeah, so I, I understand. Yeah, because obviously capital is usually money. But, you know, from the NGO or learning, capital is a whole lot. You know, sometimes the, the capital you even need to maybe enter a room or do something is not necessarily the financial. You know, it's your network, it's your intellect is your, you know, um, resources and everything, yeah. So sorry, coming back to what you said about okay. the human capital areas we can explore. I think um, business development, entrepreneurship, these are things that, these are areas we can actually explore considering our own context in Nigeria, you know, wanting to build people's capacity and Western empowerment. So of course, there are different capitals we can explore, human capital, but um, building people's ability to, you know, um, Transform whatever they have, that skill into business. You know, the business development part is a huge part. You know, that can boost human capital, financial capital, economic capital, social capital, and the likes. Yeah. So I'll just say, I'll just talk on that too because of time. Yeah, entrepreneurship and business development. Okay. Okay. <laughs> as you go about uh, empowering people, I know you want to make our society a best place for all of us. Oh, to not see. better, best. So, no, a best, not better. Yeah. <laughs> so as we go quickly, your final words. Uh, what we need to do to ensure that as we receive this empowerment, we stay abreast with what we are doing and make uh, ourselves better on the job. Oh, okay. Um, so on final notes, um, I will just say two things. Yeah. Okay. So the first will be um, engagement. That's community engagement. We should learn to, you know, participate in what's going on. We should collaborate with one another. We should partner. You know. There's a role for everyone not in this job. Actually, it's not just one person you know running it and all. So everyone should identify their role. And just play it, you know, to actually help to push that empowerment I want to see faster and easier. And then the second one will be to lead yourself forward. If everyone would actually just do the right thing most of the times, you know, to reduce the headache of a lot of the bodies and the setback. Of course, we'll still make that progress, but the progress might be slower than it should be if everyone, you know, just does it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tommy, for coming. Yeah, we appreciate you. Thank you. Well, the program is Good Morning Abuja, as you know, and uh, Coach Tommy C here yeah. uh, just, just, just took us through the process of uh, empowerment and all of that. It's been good having you on set. Thank you so much. We'll quickly go on a short break now when we return. Good Morning Abuja continues. Stay with us. <laughs> 